Welcome, welcome everyone into a very special edition of the Jazz Film Room podcast. I am so excited to welcome in someone you all know well and love. He's a friend of mine. He's a longtime NBA referee and now a development advisor in the NBA's refereeing department. Joey Crawford. Joey, how are you, man? Hello. Doing great, Ben. Thank you very, very much for having me. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, As many folks know who are regular listeners, followers of the Film Room, I am shall we say, a supporter of NBA referees on a much higher level than I think most other NBA fans probably are. I like to write about them. I like to cover them. Frankly, I feel they're heavily undercovered as a very important part of our game. And Joey's someone who over the years I've I've been lucky enough to be able to talk to, bounce things off of, learn about the refereeing program. And frankly, I'm really grateful and I'm really happy that he's able to come on today. Welcome in, Joey. And thank you as well uh, uh, to Jim LaBombard with the league for helping us to make this happen. Um, We've got several things that we're going to dig into here. Some are, I want to get into a few current league officiating things, because as you know, I take this stuff very seriously. And I I think there's some cool stuff to, whether it's informing fans or just getting the opinions of someone like yourself, who's got so much expertise and is on the ground with this stuff. And then of course, we'll get into some fun stuff. I'll ask you about some of your favorite players to officiate some fun stories through the years, all that sort of thing. Uh, The first area that I actually wanted to hit, I think, I guess we'll start serious and we'll kind of move down from there. One area that I've, I've written briefly about it, at least I wrote for SB Nation a couple years ago regarding uh, the psychological themes that the NBA helps train its referees with, because I think, I think just at a broad level, the average fan understands that this is an enormously stressful job, being, an, being a referee of any major sport, but particularly an NBA referee. And I wanted to call attention in particular to an ESPN story from August in 2018 by Jackie McMullen, fantastic writer, that features both yourself, Joey, and a number of other NBA referees and NBA referee-related staff. And the story is about Dr. Joel Fish, a sports psychologist uh, at the Center for Sports Psychology in Philadelphia, who works with NBA referees and, and lots of other people. And the story is very detailed, of course, and it goes back into, discusses an issue with you, uh, where you ended up, you actually ended up using therapy as a, a, something that I believe, if I'm not misquoting you, you credited as potentially helping save your career. I'm really interested in oh, but not only your personal experiences there, but also the developments the league has made, whether it's Dr. Fish, who's mentioned in this article, or an, a number of other avenues that I know the league has looked at as far as this area, which I think is very important both in overall society and in an area that, as we know, with refereeing is so high stress in general. And first of all, thank you, Ben, for for uh, getting us out there. You're one of those guys that uh, um, gets our craft out into the public and the public. The more they know about our profession, the better off it is as far as as we are concerned. Um, and thank you again. Um, My pleasure. The article that I did with Jackie, it was Jackie's idea. I mean, I, you know, referees, we don't seek that kind of, um, that kind of attention. But Jackie had had known that I had uh, um, sought help uh, from uh, Joel Fish, who I think is just a fabulous human being, and he gets aggravated at me for br- mentioning his name all the time. Because he says, you know, the doctor client privilege and stuff, but it's that's not a big deal with me. I mean, referees are referees, we're transparent and everything's out there. You see your calls and you know, you and your screw ups and things like that, and they're out there for everybody. But Joel helped me. I had an incident, a couple, not a couple, a number of incidents throughout my career where I'd lost my temper and 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 in, and actually more than losing my temper, and uh, and the one that really put it in um, vogue or perspective was when I uh, was suspended in the Tim Duncan thing, and then I I had spoken to to Joel Fish before that, but this really um, I I I really sought his help and spoke to him on a consistent basis. And what he did is he helped me in um, trying to control, not trying, but to control my my temperament on the court. And it was probably my last 10, 10 years, 12 years in the league. And um, the things that he um, 
that we talked about in therapy really, really contributed to peace of mind is what it was. It, you know, if, if, if I screwed up a play and I knew I screwed up a play. I now didn't take it out on the player or the coach. And I just, Joe, you made a mistake. Let's move on to the next 24 seconds. I'm crystallizing that and, and bringing it um, uh, without talking about that kind of stuff for an hour and a half. But that's really, in essence, how Joel helped me. He just gave me different exercises that I could use under high pressure situations that I would lose my cool and be able to deal with it so that I could now help myself referee the rest of the game and also help my crew. And it was just, he, he was just a, a, a like a, a lifesaver. And I still talk to him occasionally. He's a wonderful man. And I, and I call him and we talk and we laugh and uh, about certain things that happened and, and when we were seeing one another. And it's, it's, it's been a terrific relationship. But he really, really, really helped me. That's fantastic. Do you know, and if you're able to say, I don't know if this is a private area or anything, do you, is he still working with referees within the league? Or are there similar programs like that that are still available to referees in the league? Oh my, oh yeah. I, I don't know if Joel's working because a lot of that stuff is private yeah. and, and me being um, on the management team, we, we would never even seek that stuff out. I'm hoping, and any referee that approaches me, which some have, and they've said, Joe, you know, could you give me a little guidance about Joel? And I said, oh, of course. And they said, he's never going to tell anybody. He doesn't tell anybody anything. But I'm, I'm, if, oh no, the league is really wide open. If, if a referee wants to go and talk to somebody, it's, 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 it's right there, right there for you. It's, it's, it's terrific. It's how mm -hmm. they, they treat the referees. The, the league really, really treats the referees good. I mean, it's, it's first class. I hit just a little of that in the piece I mentioned. I believe it was it was either 2018 or 2019 on SB Nation, but I'll put it on my Twitter uh, so folks can see it. Just some of the, it wasn't necessarily as much about mental health as much as the ability to, I mean, you guys are processing things at an incredible rate of speed. Yeah. The best, mm -hmm. the best athletes in the in the entire world, yes. nuanced contact where one little bit of contact is okay, but if it crosses a line, all of a sudden it's not okay. And I, yeah. if I recall correctly, a lot of the article was about the the themes that you use to help. That that's that's difficult just from a mental standpoint. That's not easy, right? Yeah, there were certain things where where um, Joel would say, Joe, when you see yourself getting on that you know, that jet you're going to take off. <laughs> there are certain things, put your hands behind your back, do something that now says, Joe, come on down, come on down, listen to the coach, listen to the player. And, and, and it not only helped me then with refereeing, but it helps me in this job that I'm doing because I'm in constant communication with all the refs. And I try to tell them, Hey, I've been both sides on the jet and then going down that real calm, cool path. And that calm, cool path is the way to go because that when you go off and you're, nobody's listening to you because what they're doing is they're looking at the anger where the face gets red and you're screaming. They're only looking at that. But when you're talking like you and I are talking now, there's, more of a dialogue they're at the player or the coach actually may be listening to you you know versus they're not l listening to you when you when you lose your temper and you and you uh go crazy but it's it's really really helped me in this job it really has i think it could help a lot of people frankly in a lot of walks of life we all have stress we all totally have situations ben you're you are you hit it right on the head i think a lot of people if they just get over the problem of Wow, I don't want anybody to find out I went to a therapist, you know? <laughs> it doesn't bother me at all. I tell everybody, I said it was probably the best thing I ever did in my life, you know? Yeah. I didn't marry my wife, but, <laughs> but 
and I gotta say that. You gotta <laughs> say that. One. I gotta do the same. But no, I would. I, I have no problem with saying it as well. I've also young. When I was a younger man, I had some issues. I and therapy helped me a lot. And I would anyone That's who's it. going through that. It really helped. It really helped me. I I tell everybody, go see a therapist. Go yeah. see a therapist. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, and I, I do think it's not just for you personally, but the fact that the league has, and I know that the league has promoted that really oh, heavily. They're, they're awesome. Because it's it's just hard. It's it's just a really hard job. Not even just the technical difficulty of it but in a normal situation i know this year is a bit different but in a normal situation people screaming at like that's no matter how well you're trained to block that out or to not care it's yeah. human nature at a certain well, point. you're the only it really my my brother who was a major league baseball umpire for 35 years we talk about it all the time we're we're like the only uh profession that somebody is calling you all these names and you're supposed to, you're supposed to the next time go, wow, you're really a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, nice guy. But other, other uh, walks of life, they would punch the guy, you know, or I'm not going to ever talk to that person in my whole life, but that's not what our job is. Our job is to, when that happens, let it go and let's move on to the next game. That's just exactly what you do. Yeah. And that's very hard. And that's part of the reason why I support you guys is because frankly, I feel like there's a lot of folks that don't factor in those kinds of things when they talk about you. So 